In this video, I'll walk through the basic steps to building your own guitar amp cabinet with minimal tools. I've wanted to build my own custom guitar amp cabinet for years, but kept getting discouraged whenever I'd see other builds on YouTube using fancy tools and jigs I don't have. So after years of putting it off, I decided to try and build one using as few tools as possible. This video gives you an overview of the entire build process, and if you want more detail, check out the detailed free guide on my website. In the guide, I cover everything you would want to know, from the type of woods and wood joints to use, every essential and optional tool, cabinet parts, wiring diagrams, and a thorough step-by-step -step walkthrough of building your own cabinet. Use this video as a way to decide whether you want to build your own guitar amp cabinet, then use the guide for detailed advice. In this video, I'm building a simple 1x12 cabinet, but the main steps I cover will be the same for other cabinet sizes. Check out the guide for advice on different cabinet sizes. The first step after you plan your build following the advice in my guide is to measure and cut the cabinet sheets. If you have a table saw, this is a quick and easy job that can achieve perfectly straight and square cuts. Now I don't have one, so I had to settle with using a circular saw. Cutting the sheets with a circular or hand saw takes longer and more effort, but you can still end up with a great quality cabinet. Just take your time and do everything you can to keep the cuts straight and square by carefully measuring and marking lines to follow. Later on the edges will be cleaned up, so don't worry if your cuts aren't perfectly straight. Mine definitely weren't perfect. I recommend writing on each panel what they are to avoid confusion later on. You'll end up with four main panels for the outer frame. We'll cut the two panels for the front and back later on. The second step is to build the outer frame of the cabinet. This is when you need to decide what type of wood joints to use. If you'll be using box joints or dovetails, use your rig to cut the joints as needed. I go into detail on each type of wood joint in the guide to help you decide which to go with, so I won't go over them again here. I'm using a simple butt joints as I don't have the right tools to do a good job at box joints or dovetails. Butt joints aren't as common for guitar cabinets, but brands such as Orange use them, so they're still perfectly fine to use. As you can see, I'm using corner clamps to help keep everything tight and square. Use anything you have available such as a set square or another piece of wood to help keep the joints as square as possible. If you're using butt joints like I am, double check the way you join the panels together. If you join them the wrong way around, your cabinet will suddenly end up too tall or too wide compared to your plans. You can see for my build that the left and right panels sit on the inside of the top and bottom panels. I'm using screws to help keep the joints tight as the glue dries. I take the screws out later before I round over the edges. Keep this in mind if you're thinking of using nails or screws. Dowel rods are another option and won't cause problems later on when you round over the edges. Let the glue dry overnight before moving on to the next step. 24 hours is best. The third step is to build the inside frame that will hold the baffles in place. There are different ways you can do this depending on the style of cabinet you want to build. The frame I'm building is the main style used for cabinets covered in Tolex. The front frame will be flush against the outer wall, while the back frame will be offset for the back panel to mount to. If you're building a closed back cabinet like I am, make sure you leave a gap in the back frame to give you space to slide in the front baffle. If you forget to add this gap, you're going to have issues assembling the cabinet later. As you can see, I'm measuring as I go instead of using measurements from my plan. This way, if there's any imperfections in your outer frame, the inner frame will still fit perfectly. You can use thinner or thicker wood to change the appearance of the front of the cabinet. If you want the speaker grill to have a thick border, use thicker wood. This is an easy way to personalize the look of your cabinet. When you're ready to glue and nail the inner frame, use any clamps you have to help keep them in position. Remember to offset the back frame by the thickness of your wood to leave room for the back panel. Add a bit of extra space if you're planning on using Tolex, or you may find that the back panel sticks out slightly. The next step is to measure and cut the front and back baffles. The front baffle will be used to mount the speakers and the back baffle is for the back panel. Measure the inside dimensions and cut the sheets to size. The back baffle should be slightly smaller to allow clearance for the Tolex. You can see that the back panel I cut fits in fine now but later on after I cover the cabinet in Tolex, it didn't fit. So don't be tricked by how thin Tolex appears. Leave enough gap for the panel to slide in. Now you can measure the position of your speakers and cut a hole for each one. I traced the speaker and added an inner offset to mark out the circle to cut. Don't accidentally cut out the circle you trace or your speaker won't fit. I know that sounds obvious, but if you're like me, dumb mistakes somehow manage to sneak their way in. So try and plan ahead to avoid potential mistakes. If you have a router, it may come with a circle cutting jig, or you can make your own. I decided to go the easy option and just cut the circle by hand. You'll get a perfect circle if you use a jig, 
but depending on the speaker cloth you use, you may not see any imperfections if you need to cut it without a jig. If you don't have a router, you can use a jigsaw if you take your time. I definitely recommend using a circle jig if you have one available. As I had the router out, I decided to also cut the hole for the speaker jack in the back panel. I wanted side handles for this build, so I'm cutting the holes for them now. Side handles aren't normally used on small cabinets, but I like how they look. And that's the great thing about building your own cabinet. You can customize it however you like. Now you can measure and cut the frame for the speaker cloth. If you're going to be using piping around the speaker frame, make sure you take that into account when measuring the frame. It may not seem like much, but the thickness of the tolex, the speaker cloth and the piping all add up. If you don't leave a large enough gap, you may have trouble squeezing the piping into place. The next step is to run a roundover bit over the edges of the cabinet with a router. A roundover bit is a router bit used to turn a hard edge into a smooth curve. If you don't have one, it's possible to file and sand the edges manually, but I recommend buying a roundover bit and doing it properly. It makes a big difference. This was the best part of the build for me, and it was surprising how much the look of the cabinet improved after running the router over the edges. Having smooth edges gives your cabinet a more professional look. Obviously, you should take out any screws before you run the router over them. It's easy to fill in the holes with wood filler later. If you're concerned about the strength of the joints, you can add nails in after they round over the edges. But if you were careful in the earlier steps, your cabinet's going to be strong. After filling in the screw holes and letting it dry, I lightly sanded the entire cabinet. The next step is to paint any areas of the cabinet that won't be covered by the Tolex. Or if you're not using Tolex, you can prepare the surface for any varnish or paint you plan on using. As a minimum, you'll need to paint the front baffle and the frame for the speaker cloth so you won't see the wood grain behind the speaker cloth. I decided to paint the entire inside of the cabinet. This is a good idea if you're planning on building an open back cabinet. Try to spray multiple light coats rather than a heavy coat to avoid any runs in your paint. Once you've prepared the cabinet surface, you're ready to apply Tolex or varnish or paint. Start by planning out how you'll apply the Tolex and where the seam will be. I decided to first apply the Tolex to the back panel for practice before applying it to the entire cabinet. That way, if I messed up, which I did, it would only waste a small amount of Tolex compared to the amount applied to the entire cabinet. You can either use spray adhesive or contact adhesive. I recommend using contact adhesive for the best results. Make sure you apply the adhesive to both the back of the Tolex and the surface you're gluing it to. It's important to let the contact adhesive dry until it's only slightly tacky before you stick the Tolex onto the cabinet. You should be able to touch the adhesive and not have it come off on your finger, but it still feels sticky. Applying pressure helps remove any air bubbles and creates a good bond. I used the kitchen rolling pin and it worked well. To finish the bottom seam, make sure you overlap the ends. Then use a sharp knife to cut straight through both Tolex ends. Peel the Tolex back and remove the offcut. Press the Tolex back down and you'll end up with a perfect seam where both ends meet at the exact same straight line. Once you completely cover the cabinet, it's time to work on the edges and the corners. It's tricky to get neat corners on your first attempt, but the good news is that your corner pieces will hide any imperfections. I recommend starting on the back corners as they won't be as noticeable if you make any big mistakes. Apply the contact adhesive, wait for it to become tacky, then clamp the Tolex in place as you work through the edges. Pull it tight and use staples to secure it in position. Corners are tough, but the basic idea is to cut and fit one side, then cut a 45 degree line through both Tolex parts to create a perfect seam. Take your time and by the last corner you're going to be an expert. The next step is to add the speaker cloth to the frame. Allow plenty of overhang as it helps you pull the cloth tight against the frame. I started by stapling the middle of the frame and pulling the opposite end tight. You should end up with a tight cross across the middle. Once you have the center tightly secured, it's a simple job of working away from the middle towards the edge, pulling the cloth tight and stapling it into position. With the Tolex and the speaker cloth installed, you're ready to assemble everything together. Let's start by mounting the speaker on the baffle. You can either use screws or T-nuts to mount the speakers. To install T-nuts, you need to drill holes for each T-nut and bash them into position with a hammer. Next, screw the jack plate into the back panel. While these are easy parts to buy, I designed and 3D printed my own jack plate because I wanted mine to be recessed far into the cabinet so I can easily sit the cabinet against the wall without the speaker cable sticking out. Install the cabinet feet or casters and make sure you position them far enough from the edges to leave room for your corner pieces. Then you can install the handles and the corner pieces. It's a good idea to drill pilot holes for the screws to avoid splitting the wood. I couldn't find where I left my corner pieces for the back so you won't see them in this video. 
With the corner pieces installed, you can slide the front baffle into the cabinet from the rear. Screw the panel into position and be careful about the placement and the length of the screws to make sure they don't breach the front. Now that the speaker baffle is installed, you can install your cloth frame and your piping. As soon as I started adding the piping, I decided I hated how it looked. Don't be surprised if at some stage of your build you change your mind about something. I actually liked how it looked without the piping, so I removed it and 3D printed some black wedges to hold the cloth frame in place. With the cabinet mostly assembled, you can now wire up your speakers. I have wiring diagrams for different speaker configurations, so check out the guide on the website to help you decide which way to wire up your speakers. As I'm building a 1x12 cabinet, wiring is as simple as connecting the right speaker terminals to the jack terminals. As I explain in the guide, you can either use solder or crimp connectors to connect the wires to the speakers. I'm using solder, but if you think you might want to experiment with different types of speakers in the future, you may want to use crimp connectors as they make it easy to swap your speakers in and out. Once your speaker's wired up, you can screw the back panel on. Now if you've reached this stage with your own build, congratulations. It might seem like a lot of work, but it's a great project. To add a personal touch to my build, I designed and 3D printed a Marshall style nameplate and attached it to the cloth. If you have access to a 3D printer or somebody with a laser cutter or an engraver, I recommend trying to design and make some sort of badge. It really adds to the professional look of your cabinet. If you've been on the fence about building your own cabinet, give it a go. You might be surprised by how good your cabinet ends up. Check out the link in the description and the pinned comment for the guide on my website. It covers everything you need to know and answers a lot of questions you might have. I hope you enjoyed this video and here's a short clip of the sound of my cabinet.